Hey everyone, welcome to Locked on Lakers for Monday. Brian Kamenetsky, Andy Kamenetsky. The Lakers take one on the chin on New Year's Eve and are limping into 2024 metaphorically and literally. We'll explain next. You are Locked on Lakers. Your daily Los Angeles Lakers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks to everybody for making Locked On Lakers your first listen of every day, Monday through Friday, no matter how or where you get your podcast. This one is always free, never behind a paywall. Locked On Lakers on YouTube is where over 22,000 subscribers. We're damn sure not going to be charging you the way the Lakers no, are playing right now. <laughs> it's, look, the, our, we're, we're still doing our job. It's not our yeah. fault the team's suffering. Uh, Locked On Lakers on YouTube is where over 22,000 subscribers are all very concerned about where the Lakers are after a 129-109 pasting in New Orleans on New Year's Eve. Um, the Lakers head into the new year 17-17, and 16-13 and 13 away from home. Uh, the schedule turns very home heavy in January, something we'll talk about a lot this week. But Andy, stop me if you've heard this before. Um, a lot of injuries to discuss, a lot of... Uh, confusion and a uh, lack of cohesion all of that stuff we'll get into for today's show do want to let everybody know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel make every moment more right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet that's 150 bucks if your team wins visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started um on the one hand, Andy, they got into their hotel in New Orleans at 3.30, I believe, on Sunday morning um, after playing a really hard game Saturday night in Minnesota. Um, Physically so, and emotionally, that game right, was hard. That, that was the one that they were, I think, recognizing the difficulty of the back-to-back. -back. They threw everything they had at that Minnesota game and came up a little bit short. And you know, We talked about it. It was not a bad game from the Lakers' standpoint at all. Um, they got waxed on Sunday. On the one hand, not a huge surprise, but on the other hand, when you start to look at it like where they are, big picture, Andy, it's problematic. Yeah, in this game, I mean, there are a lot of issues that the Lakers dealt with, as you would suspect, losing by 20. But to me, the biggest problem was offensive rebounds and second chance points they gave up in those offensive rebounds with 339 left in the first quarter. New Orleans already had four offensive rebounds and eight second chance points. They finished the half with eight offensive rebounds and 17 second chance points, and they finished the game with 12 offensive rebounds and 25 second chance points. You combine that with the issues the Lakers had turning the ball over, 13 of them for 17 points off turnovers. That is a brutal way to try to go about winning a game before you even take into account who wasn't on the floor and right. who left the game, namely Rui Hachimura. Um, he is now unknown his return left calf strain. Darvin Ham said that while they need to get uh, more information, it's always very high, high, high. I believe he used three highs. Level of concern whenever a player has an injury and can't re-enter a game. So... Yeah, and then that's that's coach speak for this could be a problem because normally they are, yeah, we'll wait and see, we'll get evaluated, whatever. But like if they're already talking in dark terms, it, it's it's not it does not uh, bode well going forward. But we will find out more information about that this week. But the absence of Hachimura certainly had an impact on this game. But for you know, what it's, it's worth, too, just so people know, sure. uh, Cam Reddish and D'Angelo Russell, who missed the game with a groin strain in Reddish's case, D'Angelo Russell that bruised tailbone from the Minnesota game. They are both currently listed as day-to-day, -day, so hopefully that is optimistic heading into the next game at home versus the Heat. Right, and that is Wednesday, so the Lakers mm -hmm. do have an extra day um, to recoup, um, and you know they need those guys back in the lineup, to say the very least. The the the, the funny thing, and I, I don't mean that funny ha-ha, um, about the, the offensive rebounding, which has been a problem all year long, 
is that it didn't seem like the Pelicans were missing <laughs> in the first quarter. So when you combine the fact that C.J. McCollum had five three-pointers in the first eight minutes of the game um, and the, the, the Pelicans were shooting a high percentage with the fact that when they, when, they man, when they did manage to miss, they were putting the ball back in half the time. <laughs> they shot 61.5% from the field and 70% from behind the arc. I mean, they... And yet, they, still had a lot of second-chance points. Let me put this in perspective. They had 10 misses and got six offensive rebounds on those 10 misses. I mean, I guess Very at generous. some point, kudos. That's, that's pretty yeah. damn impressive. And again, like, I... This was going to be... Even before D'Lo was out, even before um, Radish was, was missing, this was going to be a difficult game to win. I mean, the Lakers... You know, get in very late. You know, it's a relatively early start, even, you know, time zones notwithstanding because it's New Year's Eve and usually those are bumped up by an hour or so. Like the, it, it was just it, not much about this was set up for the Lakers to win. But the problem is like we're getting to a place now where at 17 and 17, you know, Darwin said it after the game, but got 48 games left. And, you know, you go back to the experience of last year. There's a lot of time for the Lakers to get things together. And on the one hand, they are better off than they were last year at this time in terms of their record. But the flip side of that is the, the conference is so far ahead of where it was last year that that progress is relative. The Lakers go into the new year at, at in the ninth spot in the conference um, and having had played four more games than the Rockets, who I don't expect necessarily to hang out, but the, they've played four more games than the Rockets, um, you know, holding on to that ninth spot. They are not, as a team, Anthony Davis, LeBron James doing what they're supposed to do, but as a team, they are not in a good place as we flip the calendar to 2024. Yeah, the four extra games in the Rockets, five if you count the IST finals, also underscores how many games the Lakers have played compared to most of the league and certainly how many road games, which on the plus side, as we've said, it starts to even out, particularly in January. The, the slate of teams, and we're going to break this down more in Tuesday's show, the slate of teams that they face in January isn't necessarily easy but they only leave Los Angeles once in the entire month. That is an advantage any way you slice it, regardless of who you're going to be playing. The back-to-backs, which the Lakers have had an unusual amount of to start this season. Seven, most in the league. Yeah, they start to decrease. So some of this explains, not entirely, but to some degree where the Lakers are. But it also puts in perspective, okay, you know, as, as Darwin is – Want to say after every single game, you know, nobody is going to feel sorry for us. And um, gotta, Andy, oh, you got to fill up your cups. Re- really, we got to refill our cup. You got to refill your cups. Um, this is lack of sympathy and cup filling season right now as <laughs> January kicks off. The, the Lakers cup. may not be fill that cup, fill that cup, <laughs> fill that cup. Like they are not in a place right now that is necessarily perfect. But they are also at a place that they have to capitalize moving forward. Yeah. Find a way to make it happen. And it and it's it we'll talk more in the next segment about you know tonight's or, you know Sunday night's latest chapters in the the incredible shuffling lineups and the injuries and and these sorts of things. Um, but they are kind of at a point now where it just doesn't matter. Like you know if you're going to make progress. Progress is going to be need needed to be made with whatever you have available to you, and and you no longer can kind of wait, um, bide time, tread water, whatever kind of metaphor you want to use for it. I will say, and as we we go into the break here, um, this is still not an Anthony Davis problem. He had five blocks uh, on. Uh, on Sunday, 20 points, um, 10 rebounds. You know, he was you know, doing his job. LeBron had 34, 5, and 8 
Um, overall, you know, I don't think and, LeBron was quite as, as good as his stat line. Though. I don't think I he thought was his decision making in this game was off. He, he had a bad. couple, he had at least two of the four turnovers that he had were just like, dude. Um, but overall, sure, a pretty strong game. I'm just saying, as far as contextually, I, yes. I don't think his game was, I'm not saying he played badly, but I don't think his game was quite as good as his line either. I would agree with that. Um, I, I, I do, I, I, I would agree with that, but. The, you know, the issue, I think, as it was Saturday, um, was the the supporting cast. So I want to talk about that, where they are, what happened on Sunday, but also where they are as a group, um, because the group keeps shifting and the performances keep falling short, in my mind, at least. We'll get to that next. Lockdown Lakers brought to you by FanDuel, and the NFL season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. And that app is really easy to use. A lot of different ways to play, same, live, same game parlays. You can find different bets in the new Explore tab. You can make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays, so much else. And obviously, there are NBA options out there for you, whether you want to bet on the Lakers winning it all. Probably don't feel like doing that right now, but it wait, is an wait, option. Wait, wait a couple weeks. You might feel yeah. better. <laughs> LeBron and AD in the MVP chase. Anthony Davis, Defensive Player of the Year. Austin Reeves is in the mix for Sixth Man of the Year. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet, a layup. Okay, so let's just stipulate for the, the sake of conversation that um, LeBron and AD are doing what LeBron and AD need to do. Like they sure. are playing at the level that, you know, they, that is expected. I think Anthony Davis, he's not going to win MVP. He's not going to be in the the conversation for MVP as long as the Lakers are, are close to 500. But, and this is something that we got, I got a little flack for. We got a little flack for in the YouTube comment section. I didn't say he was the MVP. I'm saying he is playing at an MVP level. Um, he's not going to win it, but that's the level. Look, Anthony Davis only gets discussed nationally in any type of conversation when he's not playing well, when he yeah. is playing well, uh, apparently nobody cares, right? It's not an issue. Um, <laughs> So <laughs> it's just not interesting. No, so, it, it really isn't apparently. I but like he is he is not the problem. No. And LeBron is, you know, he, he, some of the caveats he's not, you know, super prime age 28 LeBron, but he, you know, when you say like his 34 point game wasn't as good as it, you know, looked like the, I and I agree with you like we are nitpicking to some degree here. I, I look at something like Reeves, who finished. You want to talk about a line that looks probably a little better than it should. Reeves finished seven of 12, five of six from uh, the free throw line, missed four or five threes. That's you know something that sticks out. Nine assists, 20 points. It looks like a pretty good line. In the first half, though, he was terrible. And on a night <laughs> where the Lakers were shorthanded, they needed a player like Reeves, most likely candidate there, to elevate what he has been doing and rise up to make the Lakers a little better than the sum of their parts on a night like Sunday. That, to me, has been the issue, I think, for a lot of the year. LeBron and AD have been healthy and doing what they're supposed to be doing, and for a variety of reasons, and I think Sunday was a good example, that supporting cast which I think we all had extremely high hopes for, I think overall has just not elevated in the way that it, that, that the Lakers expected and needed to. Well, I think some of the issues with the supporting cast get exacerbated when they don't have as many members of them available. Yes. Because when D'Lo is not there, when Rui leaves the game and can't come back in, when Reddish isn't there, you are then bumping up guys, not just in terms of the minutes that they play, but the responsibilities on yes. them. And that starts becoming a problem. Like you mentioned Reeves in the first half. I think a reason he played better in the second, not the, but certainly a, is he started that second half in place of Rui, which means he started the game 
with another ball handler out there in LeBron. And th- we've talked about this before. In the case of Reeves, he can have small stretches where he is the primary or maybe even sole ball handler out there and you can get by, but it is rarely strong and more often than not, it's a problem. Right. And in this game where you don't have D'Lo, you lose Rui as both a scorer and a safety valve. Like Rui is one of the best on this team in terms of finding open spots and relocating, like giving a guy like Reeves, if he's the only ball handler out there, like an actual target. Right. Somebody to you, throw the ball to. Right. You don't have Reddish who can maybe create some disruption, loose balls. The Lakers grab them, although tonight was not a night where it seemed like they're going to grab any. Um, you know, you can maybe get some easier baskets that way. You know, there was one point actually I tweeted out at Cam Brothers during the game, like the fact that the Lakers were without D'Lo and, you know, you were, I think you had tweeted out like they basically have to, to some degree, divide up Reeves and LeBron because they only have two ball handlers and you can't play them both the entire game. This was like indicative of the issues that come with Darvin not being confident enough in Jalen hood Shafino to play him because you don't have D'Lo, you don't have Vincent which isn't necessarily an indictment. Yeah, but of, in fairness, he should be, you know, he should be not right, confident. In, right. In, in, I'm yeah. saying it's not an indictment of Jalen hood Shafino as a player at age, I believe he's 19, 20, whatever, a rookie, like big picture, but it speaks to the problem. And then really speaking to the problem, he eventually gave JSH a try because it's like, i got to put another person out there who can handle the ball. Right. It's... And it becomes are, restrictive for all of the role players out there. Right. I think overall, when I look at it for you know most of the season, or the the one of the only guys I look at, it's like okay, like, Torian Prince has basically played, I think, as they expected. Got off to a slow start, there's no question. But I think broadly speaking, I look I look at Prince, I'm like that's kind of what Torian Prince is supposed to do. Um, and I realize yeah. he is wildly unpopular right now with a lot of Lakers fans because they think he takes Rui's minutes. They think he takes Max Christie's minutes. Christie, by the way, played a fair amount uh, on Sunday night, did not shoot the ball uh, particularly well, um, 3 of 11 from the floor. Um, was he okay. defended and he, rebounded he defended, well. He, he came in and did a nice job kind of putting a ending the C.J. McCollum show. Um, and so I think they have a legitimate question as to what to do. And at the very least, I know I've, t- I've talked about it as a spot up shooter, where I think he came into the game at 41% as a spot up shooter and catch and shoot, spot up shooter, all these different designations. Like they're all chopped and sliced and diced in different ways, but you know, used not as a, an initiator of the offense, a secondary ball mover and a spot up shooter. I feel like he can have some success. I'm still an advocate of putting him in the starting lineup over Cam Reddish. Um, if Jared Vanderbilt's going to play or leave Reddish in there and start Christie and not don't start Vando. But um, in the lineup, by the way, I don't know if we'll have enough time to get through it all in this show. We'll talk about it more this week. Darvin indicated that with uh, Rui was seemed like Rui was going to stay in the starting lineup and the Vando Reddish experiment might be over. Um, now we'll see what they do because if Rui misses time, we're kind of back to square one. But like you know, and we Christine, don't even know when Reddish is going to be available, right? I, I, not, I, I don't know anything. Like Christie played okay, and he certainly showed what he could do defensively. They're just they're in this place, and I've talked about it, where like as an ecosystem, the ecosystem of supporting players for the Lakers is completely out of whack, and I think there is a a bad combination of Darwin not really playing fully to the strengths of the supporting cast in terms of how they're deployed. Um, the supporting cast not playing well enough as individual players independent of whatever the coach is doing, and then just not having the right combination of players available to allow the best lineup combinations to work together and thrive. It is three things happening simultaneously, all of which are bad. That's what I'm seeing right now. Well, I mean, we we can talk about this more after the break, but I remember it was maybe a week or so ago, we spent part of one show talking about how it seemed very clear that Darvin 
forget the idea of settling on the rotation that he wants. It, it, he hadn't really figured out like just a level of comfort with the rotation. And, and we said at the time, there were some extenuating circumstances that at least you could give a little bit of leeway to Darwin in terms of there are things that he can't control that are causing at least some of this. Talk right. about when we come back. It is time for him to, whatever degree is in his power, land on what he wants and stay with okay. it. Because I, you start getting a sense that guys – it's not a question of not understanding their roles or whatever. They don't understand how they're being deployed, when they're going to be deployed, why they're being deployed to do whatever the role. I, you, I think this is – I'm glad you brought this up because I actually think you used an expression that sums it up better than this question about roles, which as we talked about for the Sunday special, um, sometimes just means – Guys don't like what they're being asked to do. Mm -hmm. Guys don't like their playing time. Guys use an expression that is, I think, critical here. So we'll get to it next. Lockdown Lakers brought to you by Prize Picks, the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform in North America. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stats projections and watch the winnings roll in up to 25 times your money. And with basketball in full swing, you can pick combo projections across football and basketball from the special league created specifically for projections that include two or more players from different sports or leagues. For example, LeBron and Travis Kelsey at a 10 and a half combo of three pointers made and receptions, mix it all up, keep it fun. And with prize picks reboot policy, this, this would have been unfortunately applicable tonight. Your entry stay in play, even if one of your players gets injured. So NFL games, NBA games, Lakers in New Orleans against the Pelicans, hypothetically speaking. If you had Rui Hachimura, who exited the game in the first half, didn't return in the second half, Rui would be, or any other player like that, rebooted. PrizePix is the only daily fantasy sports platform with injury insurance. So go to prizepix.com slash LockedOnNBA. Use the code LockedOnNBA for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. All lowercase LockedOnNBA. PrizePix.com slash LockedOnNBA. PrizePix daily fantasy sports made easy so you when you kind of you know in the context of whether it's roles or whatever use the expression like darvin needs to decide what he wants and that to me because roles to be fair to darvin have been really hard to land on lineups have been really hard to land on i saw somebody you know a, a member of the sort of lakers media twitter you know universe talking about how like the, La the Lakers, you know, were supposed to be leaning into continuity this year and they haven't done any of the stuff that, you know, got them to the Western Conference Finals last year. And there, there is a lot of truth to that. But the flip side is the lineup that they used last year to get to the Western Conference Finals wasn't available to them for the first 20 games or 20 something games of the season because Jared Vanderbilt wasn't around. Um, you know, some of the other stuff they haven't been able to do because Gabe Vincent hasn't been able to play. Um, you know, th there have been different things that have made some of that difficult guys, you know, the combinations of players that are available will dictate for supporting characters, supporting characters. It's not a movie supporting <laughs> players. Uh, <laughs> It's not a movie uh, I like right now. No, it's a terrible, terrible film. <laughs> um, like the, the the combinations are dependent on each other. It is difficult to figure out. Like sometimes it's easier to use Rui when Vanderbilt is there, or he's not, or if AD is playing. And like when Austin Reeves is playing well, that influences who you can play next to him. When D'Lo suddenly slumps, that influences. Like all of these things matter in terms of pairing the players together. Um, whether it's Christian Wood or whomever. But I don't think right now there's a clear there's a clear identity for what this team is supposed to look like. Even if they can't accomplish it on any given day because the 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 players aren't there, I I don't feel like I know what they're supposed to be. And I get the impression, Andy, that they don't understand what they're supposed to be either. <sighs> I don't entirely agree because I hear enough players and Darvin talk about them being a defense first team. So I feel like they feel like that is 
their identity, and that is ultimately their ethos. I I think they think that. I think Darwin thinks that as well, which explains, by the way, whether you like the lineup decisions he's made or not, it explains a lot of them. In the same way last year, it felt like a lot of his lineup decisions were made from an offensive standpoint and right. like the the skill players that he used, some of the floor combinations. And I I have often gotten the impression that Darvin is at his core more of an offense first player uh, coach than a defense first coach, uh, just my impression. Mm -hmm. But this year, it's felt to me as the season's gone along that that is the thing that they want to lean into and where they think their success lies most, which makes sense because their best player is Anthony Davis. Right. And Anthony Davis is arguably the best defensive player in the league. That said, how they are getting there. That's the part. And that's has, the part that I'm really. How they are getting oh, there yeah. has been imperfect for reasons at times that are outside of Darwin's control. Um, whether you're talking about lack of availability or sometimes guys not going out there and doing their jobs well enough. But I also feel like these – you wonder at times if what feels like indecision from Darwin about how to get this thing that he wants is starting to seep into the players. Again, not necessarily – failing to understand their roles or even failing to understand the mission statement, but not understanding the method to the madness. That's, that's, I think what I'm really getting at here because like, you know, I, in, in some of my other work, like, you know, talk to a lot of like, it's like a lot of business stuff. You talk to a lot of CEOs and, 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 and business leaders and stuff like that. And, and they talk a lot about there's transformation, there's disruption, all of these things that go along with, with modern business in a digital age with AI and all these other things that, fundamentally can come in and constantly change your business model. You still have to have like this sort of like North star, like what you're, what you're going to be, what, it, what are we at? What is our identity? And you do have to have flexibility in how you get from point A to point B and be willing to change, be willing to pivot you, new lineup, try a different alignment. A guy you stick Max Christie in, or you stick Cam Reddish in coming out of training camp, which was unexpected, whatever it might be. I, I feel like, though, there th that pathway of what are the things that are important to us? What are the principles that we are going to try to employ? What kind of offense are we going to run? What kind of defense are we going to run? Um, you know, and I, I'm not, I don't, we're the wrong guys to sit here and try to, you know, break down every element of X's and O's. Like, are they running enough drop coverage when Christian Wood's on the floor versus this guy or that guy? But just, I, that level of identity in terms of not just understanding we're a defensive first team, but the principles about how we're going to accomplish those things, how we're going to create offense um, and what we want people to be doing, the kind of offense we want to run. I like I was I almost tweeted out on, on Sunday. It's like at different times in that game against the Pelicans, like the Lakers looked especially discombobulated in the half court. They have rarely looked like combobulated, like the opposite of that. But it just, it seemed further off. And everything just keeps getting further and further out of focus compared to what it was a few weeks ago when it just looked a little bit off, but not problematically so. Well, I'll, okay, I'll give an example. Um, for a team that is talking a lot about defense being their identity, they don't do a good job defending the three-point line. But beyond that, teams take a lot of threes against them as well, which may go hand-in-hand hand with the idea that the Lakers don't defend them well, and it's a three-point-centric league. But there are times when it feels like they are conceding a lot of three-pointers, sometimes against... Herb Jones had was three of five right. on, on Sunday night. He came into the game, I think Trudell put out the stat, 27% in December. So like in the scouting report, it says you concede certain things, but is Herb Jones in the corner where you want to concede that? Like, I, Yeah, I mean, look, sure. and one of those, I mean, when I was talking about you know decision-making, one of those, LeBron shaded off Herb Jones way, way too far to not help quite enough. And, you know, Herb Jones may be in, 
you know, he may be in a slump, but we've talked about this before. You know, we've seen this happen with a few other teams throughout this season. There comes a point where it doesn't matter what the law of averages say will happen with a with a player who's like a 31% three-point shooter if that dude hits four in the game against you. Like the law of averages may kick in two games from now, which means, broadly speaking, yes, <laughs> you were right about how this is going to play out, but you didn't pick it right against you. Right. And I feel like they... I feel like this team can be slow to react to this or adjust to it. Not again, unless I'm just completely misreading what they're doing. But if I'm not misreading it, it means they're doing a bad job with <laughs> with the game plan of covering these guys. But at some point, like for a team that keeps talking about defense being the calling card in a three point centric league, when you don't, you know. They're starting to shoot threes better, but they still don't take a lot to keep up with the Joneses. You got to guard threes better as a matter of principle, well, like just I, because of your offense. I think the defensive rebounding issues are related to that. Like they they don't want to get too far out because then they get spread out. And teams are beating back to the punch and stuff like that, and grabbing those offensive boards. And there's just it is a it is sort of a cascading series of things. And there are times we have seen the product look. Pretty good, um, even beyond the IST, even in losses. I mean, again, I go back to to Saturday night's game against Minnesota. Was like one. They look like a good team. You, you <laughs> look like a that good game team. as a Lakers fan going saying if I if they play like that all the time, they're one of the better teams in the Western Conference. I don't know if they win a title. I don't know, but like when the playoffs roll around, that That's that gives you a shot. You have a you have as much of a chance as anybody with what we saw on on um, on on Saturday in terms of the results. That said, lift the hood a little bit. LeBron and AD are really good, AD in particular, and they can't buy a bucket from anybody else. And I think for what I'm really starting to uh, and, and get to, and I, earlier in the season. I was like, you know, I, I don't know if we need a trade like right now. Like I, I would, you know, I, it, it is too early to say definitively that the Lakers are going to have to do X, Y, and Z if they're going to give themselves a championship roster. Right now, they're they need something because re whether it's Reeves not quite stepping up, played pretty well over the last month or so, but on a night like Saturday, Sunday, I should say, needed to be better. Saturday needed to be better. Um, like the, he has not elevated at at mo in, in enough moments for the Lakers. D'Lo started out playing great basketball and has faded um, both in usage and then in 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 efficacy. But, you know, it's been a little better, but his role is so diminished now it doesn't have the same level of impact. Rui hasn't really been a contributor all year long. He's been hurt. And he's hurt again. Whatever. He hasn't been a contributor. We haven't seen Gabe Vincent. Like it just the, their supporting cast isn't good enough right now. Whether they can fix that internally or not, it that is to me the thing that you know more than anything has to change. And then Darwin needs to coach him better. But I mean, I I'm not one of these people that's like Austin Reeves is underperforming because Darwin's not letting him start. Like grow up, you know. I mean, if that's the problem, and I don't think it is, but grow up. Um, you know, go out and play, shoot the ball better. He's not missing because Darvin isn't giving him 33 minutes. And I, somebody left an interesting comment on Twitter Sunday night. Like, I can see why Darvin thinks AR really should only play about 30 minutes a night because he's got his hands on his knees, pulling his shorts down um, Sunday night in minute 26, 27. And it's in part because he works so flipping hard on the floor. That is a style of play that you, know, you use a ton of energy. Um, so I, I am sympathetic. I am not. A, I don't think Darwin's done a great job this year by any stretch. I also think the players need to be better. So we had a lot to talk about this week, Andy. Yeah, a lot, absolutely. Locked on Lakers on YouTube is where you can go hang out, see the show, talk about these things, leave us questions, leave us comments. We do have a couple days this week to break down some uh, reader 
uh, reader, listener questions, viewer questions, viewer comments. We'll use them on the show. Uh, get you ready for Wednesday's game. We've got a couple of days to talk about it until then. And we will see everybody tomorrow. <laughs>